let's do it professional. In five, four, <laughs> three. All right. Hey, Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this is, uh, as we previously discussed, one of our very first episodes of the uh, Global Talent Accelerator Lighter Side of Tech series. Um, where we're just going to explore all things technology, but more so the times it has not helped us or the, you know, the times that it didn't help us as much then as it does now. So Mike, if you could give us a little introduction, who you are and what you do, that would be great. Uh, thanks, Lee. I appreciate being invited on. Um, Mike McGovern, I'm one of the founders of r uh, a technology services company uh, based here in Calgary. Uh, been in tech for a long, long time. I, I refuse to use numbers. I just use uh, back in the day, um, and yeah, that, so that's uh, pretty much. Uh, uh, I've been involved in tech for for a chunk of time. So it's safe to say that you have seen it, as have I. Uh, not to suggest you're older than me, but maybe you are just a little bit. We're not using numbers, as you said, uh, but it's safe to say that you have uh, been around to witness the explosive growth of technology and how we use it on a daily basis. Indeed, it's been uh, a crazy, crazy uh, uh, growth. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So Mike, we, as I said, we had previously sort of discussed this idea and you, you had decided you had some stories from, to quote you back in the day, uh, some tech stories. Could you uh, please share those with us? Sure. The, the, uh, the one that immediately came to, to mind when, when I spoke with you earlier about this is uh, one of my, my first gig in technology was with a, a company called IBM. And uh, um Part of the work that we did as uh, uh, new recruits at IBM was we worked on the customer assistance group, the CAG group, yeah. um, and we took phone calls from clients. And this was also, again, putting some numbers into it, just as PCs were starting to hit people's homes and desktops. Um, so I often was on support calls, and the, a couple of favorite ones, uh, uh, one that I did not take, but my uh, colleague did in terms of a customer had ordered a brand new IBM PC and spent a lot of money to do so, sure. uh, called and said, my computer's broken, it's not working. And, uh, my friend said, uh, what's wrong? And I said, well, everything I type is in all caps. Uh, and so he said, well, uh, uh, there's a button. And so there's anyway, he worked his way to the, worked his way to the button and, and then we never heard from him again. So that's a stupid thing. And but you know, you know, it's funny. I would dare to say that, uh, you know, that, that person might have an excuse given the timing of, you know, PCs coming into the household. Mm -hmm. I bet you that phone call is still being uh, someone where somewhere in the world, somewhere right now, there's a customer service person saying, uh, "Could it potentially be the all caps lock is on?" Or I mean, the, the other the other famous one there, Lee, was uh, the uh, uh, some very progressive uh, son had had uh, uh, purchased a home PC for his mother, uh, who was very progressive herself and using a computer back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, but she called to complain that uh, her computer wasn't working and she kept hitting the foot pedal, but nothing was working. And upon further discovery, we found the foot pedal was the mouse, which she had on the floor, just like her sewing machine. So oh, uh, that God. created a bit of a, yeah. You know what, since, you know, I've got a, I've got a wireless mouse as most of us do, you know, I might try to get into that. Maybe it'll be good for exercise. Keep my core strong. I could use the yeah. mouse on the floor. Maybe, maybe, you know, when we put this out there somewhere in the world, there's going to be a new trend, like engage your core with the new foot mouse. You never know. <laughs> I, that's a very good idea. Well, we should timestamp this. Okay. We'll talk later about royalties and kickbacks. We'll get back to that one. Cause that is oh, a good, good idea. Uh, free gift. Yeah, okay. I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. Okay, <laughs> glad this is recording. And the last one I wanted to ask you about, and again, thanks for you know chatting with me today, um, was we had also talked about how now everything on your smartphone, it doesn't require data. Like if you want to watch any form of entertainment with your Wi-Fi connection, you watch it like that. But you had a story about a very important event that yeah. previous download speeds really screwed you up with. What was that? Um, again, back in the day, um, I was working for a, a software company based out of Calgary, but was living uh, and working out of Perth, Australia. And it was in the middle of the Canada Cup uh, hockey series, and I'm a big hockey fan. Um, and I saw, I was on a 14.4 baud modem, um, and I decided that I would download the winning goal that Theo Fleury had scored in, in uh, uh, pre-tournament or something like that. It took me six hours to download the 30 second uh, video of uh, Theo Fleury. And when I actually got it downloaded, and it took me a couple tries to get it, but when it finally came onto my uh, desktop, I clicked play. 
and they missed all of the goal and just showed 30 seconds of Theo Fleury celebrating, which wasn't that much fun. And it took you six hours to discover this, maybe more because you had a few attempts at it, right? Indeed, yeah. No, it was terrible. So we would, uh, we would like to point out to anybody who is watching this right now, in your cushy 2020 world where a 30-second clip is, you can't even measure how quick that's uh, available to you, it was six hours for six that 30-second clip. I know some of you can't even imagine what life was like back then, but for most of us, that was just normal, right? Six hours. It was a very small tube. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, and is there anything else you want to you wanna throw out there and then it sort of popped up in your head? Uh, nothing. Uh, uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm just uh, uh, happy to be part of it. Thanks, Lily. Well, how, how about any, just one last question I'll throw at you, because obviously you've been in tech for a long time, first gig at IBM. You've obviously done well to stay in an ever-changing and rapidly changing industry. Um, do you have any sort of, I don't want to say, let's say experienced, weathered, uh, grade advice to anyone that's getting into the tech industry now, given how we know how fast it changes? Do you have any advice to anyone that's, uh, you know, kicking off their programs at school? Um, absolutely. I, I think that, you know, getting your technical skill is certainly a, a big part of the work we do. But um, as you move on um, out of your first and even into your second job, uh, find people you want to work with and stay with those people. Absolutely. You know, that's great advice. Okay, Mike, you know, this has been perfect. You were our, officially our first episode. So congratulations. Big shout out to you. Um, you know what? As soon as I've got this all wrapped up and edited, we'll tag you wherever you want. I'll send you a copy. But seriously, Mike, thanks for taking time out of your day to join us. Appreciate reaching out, Lee. Thanks. Thanks so much, man. We'll talk soon.